Bass Hole Studios in Hollywood, California. Yo, what time is it? You're listening to I'm a Bass Hole with Doug Bass. We've all been one. Here, he's an asshole. So let's laugh about it. Now, here's your host, Doug Bass. Hey everyone, what's up? What's up everyone? Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Doug Bass. This is I'm a Bass Hole. Uh, You guys know the drill. Uh, Subscribe to us on Instagram at Bass Hole Podcast or at Bass Hole Show. Uh, Go to the YouTube channel. Uh, It's uh, where you get the full visual experience of this show. And uh, by visual, I mean you'll be watching the videos uh, as we create them. You know, the broadcast from the actual live in-studio show or on YouTube at the YouTube channel uh, at Doug Bass Comedy or just search on YouTube, I'm a Bass Hole podcast show and you'll find it there. Um, what else is going on? Um, we have another uh, live show coming up at the uh, Hollywood Improv on uh, Sunday, December 11th at 9 p.m. Uh, tickets are now on sale. You can go to BassholeShow.com to get those tickets. Uh, if you're in the LA area, it's gonna be a fun little little Christmas show. Maybe we'll have some Christmas asshole stories. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen yet. Um, we're gonna have a good lineup though. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you who's booked yet because it's not complete yet. So I don't want to lie to you. I would never do that to you guys. I would never lie. I would always be the best, honest asshole that I can be. Uh, we got a great show today. I'm excited. Uh, I am excited. Uh, one of my, uh, my my bestie from uh, high school, from uh, the East Coast, from New Jersey, New York, uh, Michelle Trena is in the studio today, uh, and uh, she's finally here. She's finally in L.A., um, and uh, we're going to talk to her and talk to, talk about her uh, her show, uh, Divorce Diaries. Um, so let's uh, let's welcome Michelle. Michelle. Hi. Oh my god! I'm looking at myself in the monitor. This is awesome, Doug. I know you shouldn't look. You should never look at yourself in the monitor. Well, I think this is what you're doing with the the Bass Hole Studio is quite a nice studio. I'm very jealous, and it, I love it. It's an amazing studio. It's um, it's on the Universal lot. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is. I'm really proud of you. Like I'm looking at the lights, getting blinded. Like it's really cool. I'm looking at myself to see if you can see any like boogers hanging out of my nose. That's the one thing I do have a monitor in the studio that guests when they're here they can see themselves like during the broadcast. And I don't know if that's a good thing or bad. Thing, no, I love it. You should have. Because a lot of people, I think, uh, they just start looking at themselves like, oh my like God. me right now because yeah, I don't want to look like a fucking. Look, and then they don't look at like me or the camera. Or whatever. All right. Well, I looked for my but, for a second. And ultimately, if, if people were waiting in the green room, that's where they should be watching it, I guess. But you know, yeah, we don't have that kind of operation yet. So. Season season two. Season well, this is season. I think this is season two or three. I don't even know. Season two. Yeah, this All is right. season two. Season three then. Season three when we have a uh, funding. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's when that'll happen. Uh, so how are you? You made it to Los Angeles. You are here. Uh, I I made it on the asshole flight. Spirit. Yeah, I don't know why you took the spirit. Cheap cheap yeah but you pay for it in the end well i only paid five extra dollars for the food i didn't have to pay for my carry-on which was really a carry-on and i snuck it on yeah you have to really be like covert doing that i've done that a couple times with my backpack and like yeah sometimes it depends on who you get at the gate i think they'll either they'll either be like no no that's not allowed or they or they don't care yeah well these people were i think were in a rush to get to the next because they double book the the flights back to back with the gates mm. so you don't know your gate till you're right about to get on and i'm like what is going on i feel like it's the divorced airline like you're Spirit? Always, yeah Why? like you're because always you're ro- broke and you're, you're flying it or bros you're, it's like the airline is just like a hot fucking mess mm. even the stewards they were like dancing in the which i actually I've, like I've, but. Uh, you know like my, my well my ex used to have a spirit airlines credit card and like she would just she would just fly that all the time and get points on spirit. Oh, right. And I, I would always joke like, why? Like, you know, like <laughs> that's like the worst airline credit card you could probably have. They just have, like, they had that at the end. They wanted you to apply yeah, yeah. for a credit card before they you got off. It. It's like a prison sentence. They want you to keep <laughs> flying it, and then you have the credit card, then you're stuck, and then you keep flying it and flying. It's only good, literally, I would say, for like, like I'll take that to Vegas, like from LA to sure. Vegas, like yeah. or like you know, an hour flight, like th- that's it. Because like like the last time I took them when I was going to New Orleans, I got to the airport and they canceled the flight as I was there, and you know it was my my I was meeting my dad and and our friend Mark, my sister and stuff, for the uh, Final Four basketball, and you know they uh, they 
they they canceled the flight, and I, I I almost couldn't get another flight, and I yeah. almost missed the whole trip because of them. So it was like you know disaster. No, I know, I, I know you end up paying for it with them, but I just was like, it's like I'm on a budget, so. Yeah, I know. This dog is gonna bark for his food. I'm gonna give this dog his All food right. real quick because this is this is what I mean. Every time I do the podcast, a dog interrupts the session. They're the asshole. They are. They are the asshole. Prodigy, what do you want? What, 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 what? I love the way the lights look. Everything's great. I put this food down for the dog, and then he stares at it. He doesn't eat it. And then I take it away, and then he barks for it. It's so, like a man uh, when a man like him. is not interested in you, and you like give him a lot of attention, and then you pull back, and you find somebody else. Mm. Then the man is interested. That's what they do. Right. I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you are here in L.A. in the studio. Um, you have a divorce star. I mean, this is going to air after our show. We're doing shows tonight. Yes. We're doing a show tonight. Sold out tonight. Sold out show in Santa Monica at the Crow Theater, mm -hmm. right? Comedy Club. It's a new oh, comedy the, club Oh, the Crow Monica. Comedy Club. Yeah. Sorry. Crow Comedy Club in Santa Monica. I haven't been there yet. I've heard about it. But it's yeah, good. It's going well. It yeah. Um, so that's tonight, uh, Saturday night, sold out already. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to Mike Drop in San Diego to do Divorce Diaries yeah. uh, there. To uh, drop the big D. To drop the big D <laughs> in San D. Ego. Um, all right, so that's great. And then you, uh, then you also have other shows coming up, right? Yeah. At the end of the uh, the end of November in Chicago. Yeah. Right? So the next show would be in Chicago. We're doing yeah. a live taping for Amazon and throw it up on Amazon. That's oh, happening. Right. I didn't realize that. Yes, David Vox Mullen and I and the director Danny Reyes is going to pr produce it. It's it's in the works. We're going to be taping it then. Uh, and then Governors Comedy Club, December second, Long mm -hmm. Island. So for the people that don't know Divorce Diaries, I know you were on the show when it first happened, so yeah. it came around, but no one really was listening. No one's listening now <laughs> either, but it's fine. Um, so when you Divorce Diaries is a show that you created uh, when you uh, when after you went through your divorce. Yes. Uh, and it's healing through humor. It's a divorce process. It's a one woman show, a comedy show. Yeah. Stand up, uh, improv, um, storytelling, dance. Oh, now there's dancing. Now there's TikTok dancing. Uh, it's, it, it really just keeps evolving uh, as you as you keep doing it, right? Yeah. So essentially, the show is like a post-divorce journey through my eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, you've kind of been with me through it because you were starting to do stand up and then I was playing around this one woman show idea, which I have done one woman shows before more in the sense of theater, right. As opposed to just stand up and improv. Um, and then, um, when I was going through all the post-divorce stuff, I just, it kept evolving into right. this, this comedy show. And, you know, it's a grind to keep building and it, I love it. And then we also created a TV series based off of my life, which Doug has been a part of. Right. So I've kind of been a part of this. Crosby, do you have to eat during so, the, the crux of the interview? Like literally, <laughs> he, makes the, he makes so much noise with that little silver bowl. He, he's the tiniest dog. He's, too. A he's a little King Charles Cavalier, cutest dog. So adorable. But like literally, like, come on, man. <laughs> like It's like. It's all right. This is the trouble I go through with the podcast. It's doing it from my home studio. We're not on the Universal lot, in case anyone really thought that. You, know, but <laughs> you might be someday. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, ultimately it would be great if I had a space just for this podcast. But you know what? Rent's expensive in L.A. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, all right. Are you done? Are you done eating? He's Quiet done. Down. All right. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, let's just work around him, for, for Christ's sakes. Aww. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, so I've been a part of this show uh, throughout the years, yeah. um, uh, opening and featuring. <laughs> All right, you know what? <laughs> Stop with that bowl. There's no more food. It's literally every time we start talking. Oh, my God. I, I, I did. It's all right. I can't. I can't feel. Come on. That's it. One more. Aw. It's like, it's like the rest of the day when I am not trying to do a podcast. He's quiet. These, these dogs are asleep. And then as soon as I like set it up, it's like they're like children, needy and barking and give me food and. Just, so my uh, daughter does second time. Second, I go uh, on the phone. So Mom. I so I've decided to just have to incorporate the dogs into the podcast. hundred percent. There's, no, there's no way around it. hundred no percent. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> I also own a dog uh, business in LA. If you guys need a uh, dog walking or pet sitting, dogs dig dug. Dogs me, dig dug. I love that. That's our. That's the only sponsor we have right now. Because um, dogs dig dug. That's it. It's my own company. Oh. <laughs> That's the only advertisement I do. 
<laughs> somebody, you got to get a local like food dog treat. Somebody's got to be able to throw oh, you. Yeah. I don't know. We got to get some kind of. We got you know. We get. I don't know. I don't know who would want to advertise on this show. Maybe uh, maybe like therapy or therapy. Assholes. Uh, well, yeah. There's a lot of like, assholes in L.A. Well, I think maybe like a. Uh, Sorry, L.A. Maybe um. I've been trying to think of like, yeah, what, what, who would want to advertise on this show and maybe like, you know, um, throw a little money towards the show to produce it or whatever um, for advertisement spots. And I was like, all right, it's a show about assholes. So who would really want to be on that, you know? Right. And say that they're a legit asshole. I was thinking maybe like, um, you know, maybe one of those like, uh, those attorneys that represent people in accidents or something. Personal injury <laughs> Personal attorneys. Personal injury attorney. Yeah. That's right. Criminal defense attorneys. Maybe that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I got to make a list, but, uh, all right. Anyway, back to divorce. Diaries. I have so, one though that relates to divorce diaries. You can get women or men who want to get back at their exes to give you money. And then you like make a roasting joke about their ex. That's true. Yeah. That's and idea. then they sponsor you. Yeah. Well, different see. tears. We're still young. We got to figure it out. But, um, all right. So, uh, yeah, divorce diaries. I've been a part of it throughout the years. I've opened for the show. I've featured for you. Usually I'll come out and do some stand up. Yeah. And then uh, and then introduce you. And then you do your your one woman uh, show, your your stand up set. Um, and now tonight you'll see the improv that I just saw. You've added an improv section at the end. And then I come it, when back. I am on the show, I come back. Yes. As an we, improv partner. As an improv partner. But you we, kill that, by the do, way. Oh, thank you. Um, that's. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't do improv that often, but I always love doing it when I when I get the opportunity. So. We've always had, I think, a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it's when fun. we do the it's show. Fun. So then we come back, we do an improv part at the end, and you know, yeah, I've gone on the road a couple times with you to do this, so it's always fun. And I haven't, you know, I haven't done it. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, like, you know, I've always done it when I was like with my with my partner, my wife. You know, yeah. Like, uh, now. The first time, and then, then uh, um, you know, as a, we uh, we'd always do like, oh, the best of both worlds or whatever. Right. It was like it was like when I was, you know, I'd be married and I'm I'm talking about that, and then yeah, you, then you're divorced. So it was like kind of fifty fifty. Um, and now this is my first time going in like as know, a separated as man. a separated person. Yes. Well, I also feel like um, it's just kind of the the juxta of like, well, the, this divorce diaries element is really a, about my life and you being my best friend. And when we did the pilot, we left you as Doug, right? And now right. that we wrote season one, we shifted your character to a fictional, but based off of, mm -hmm. you know, the best friend, which right. I think you're going to really like. Yeah, I can't uh, wait to see the developments. Yeah, I think it's going to be. And the pilot, yeah, we shot a pilot, uh, what, two, a uh, year and a half ago? A year and a half ago, yeah. yeah. A year and a half ago in, uh, in New Jersey. Yeah, Cedar yeah. Grove, New Jersey area, and various other locations, New York. Um, that was really fun because we shot it at my old high school. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that was, like, kind of a trip for me, like, to go back and, like, you know, shoot, yeah. shoot at the place that, uh, you know, I went to high school at where, where it all started. It felt like that was my one of my favorite days. It was the school. That was my, that was my favorite day, just because yeah. I think like like doing a production in the school, like where you grew up and you went, and, you know, used to do the theater plays and stuff like that. Like that was fun to do. And that's how know? we met doing a play. We didn't meet at Cedar Grove, but we no. met doing community theater. So it comes full circle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It was kind of full circle. It's like when are we when 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 are we gonna have the opportunity to do that again? Probably never. Maybe I don't know. You know. Well, I think the start of it, too, is like it's a really nice piece of the journey. Like everyone keeps saying, enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey, which is difficult because sometimes the journey's hard. But I feel right. like, you know, those were moments where we were like, oh, this is really great. Like we get to have yeah. these comical moments together and be, and be close, be friends. And we were with friends. Dave, yeah. Dave, Dave Schoner uh, producing and uh, yeah. Mark, Mark Priano Priano. From, from here uh, uh, playing uh, Mr. Hannon. Uh, so yeah, so it was it was it was just good company, good good crew, good people, and uh, yeah, it was fun just being back in New Jersey doing that, you know. Yeah. Um. So that's uh and and you know and 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 that pilot that version of the pilot is 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 in festivals. It's doing winning well awards. And winning awards. Right? Winning awards. So what, are, so what are some of the festivals it's appeared in and has won awards? So we are currently about to be in Yonkers Film Festival, mm. um, which is on going to be our screening is going to be December tenth. And we also were in the Long Island Film Festival. We were, uh, oh God, there's a ton of online festivals we've been in. And we've won Best Comedy Series, LA Sc Film and Screenplay Festival, Best Direction, um, Best TV Pilot, Phoenix Shorts. The list goes on. Mm, we've won a great. total of 12 awards, which that's is great. perfect, yeah. Yeah. Get, grab those laurels. Yeah, I got those laurels, baby. <laughs> now we're looking for an investor for season as, one. As Dave Schoner would say. <laughs> 
It's not about the size of the <laughs> festival. It's just getting into it. <laughs> yeah, I just know. Just get in. Just get in. Just get in. Just, <laughs> it's all. It's all good. It's all good. Just keep the dialogue going. Yeah, that's my Dave Schoner impression. We love Dave. And Dave's the one of the the EPs on the project. Mm, um, yeah. And uh, we'll tag him in this. That we'll way, tag, you know, yeah, we should tag him in this. He knows we're making fun of him. All right, but with love. Um, so, uh, all right. So, um, what is next for Divorce Diaries? You got shows coming up. You, uh, you are, you, you're filming a live stage show of this so, in Chicago. You yeah. Said? So the 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 live show is uh, continuously moving along. So mm-hmm. Chicago, Long Island, New Jersey, in the next couple of months, and in Chicago where. You know, I signed with a producer to help develop it further, um, David Box Mullen, who you've had here. David Box <laughs> Mullen, yeah, his, and, uh, he's uh, he's on the podcast. Uh, he's yeah, you're, this episode doesn't come out right after. Uh, right, Dave's well, whenever episode. he comes, but I'm either, gonna pair them together. Pair them together. There you go. So he um, has helped me brought bring on like a production team and a writing team, and we wrote six episodes. Mm-hmm. Everything is packaged, ready to go. We have an investor package, our, all that kind of stuff to present the season to somebody who would invest and giving us the money to film it. And it's definitely shifted in a way where I feel even better about the development. And so as we're, you know, I'm doing the live show and putting up this special, this first special of the Divorce Diaries live edition, we're also looking for an investor for season one. Um, And I finally feel like I'm in a place where, I think I've said this to you, where I'm working with a producer who values uh, my work. He gets it. He He gets gets it. it. Yeah. There's been a lot of shady characters in and out of the divorce diary story. Look, it's hard to find. Uh, <laughs> He's not. It's hard to find a collaborator that uh, right. that isn't like you know is is. I don't know how to say it. Like it's hard as an artist, it's hard to find a collaborator that uh, even if they are an artist um, themselves, that you know doesn't want to take full control or uh, you know it's not it's not their star vehicle or whatever. Yeah. That they're but they're super equally passionate about it, you know, and. Um, and that's just finding a producer, someone who just wants to produce. You yeah. Know? Like, I'd love to find someone that wants to help produce with this show. You know? Yeah. But, like, right. I, I don't know who that is yet. You know it, what I mean? Because it, it's like, it's like, yeah. yeah, this is the show. And if you like it and like the idea, then maybe we can talk. And, and if we get along or whatever, you know. It's hard to find. It's hard to find. I it, can't even find, like, a like a, a co-host that wants to, like, hang in here every now and then. I don't think you need one. I think your guests. No, I know. No, but, like, every now and then, like, I'd like to have, like, you know. Like, yeah. Like, woman like uh, voice on the show right right you know? right because right. it's mainly like male dominated so which is yeah. fun but like every now and then i gotta like i gotta toss it up because it's yeah. important i think you know i don't want to be that that show that just has a bunch of dudes on hanging no out i think you do you and you have a nice diversity that's come to the panel so yeah. far yeah. i think that um I kept man like asking the universe. I know we were talking about being spiritual. I'm very about praying and manifesting and writing it out and asking the universe for this person and weeding out things that are not serving me. And for years, really, even before we, I wrote the pilot, I've been asking for the direction, right? Like, oh, I want to pitch this as a show. And you yeah. heard me and you're like, you got to like write a script. You got to get a cri-. And when I finally started to take the reins, I was like, okay, this is really the part of the first, the first part of the journey. And in the last year after the pilot was made, I felt like, you know, we lost a consulting producer that you remember that we were still like, okay, is he, is he not in? Right, right. It was introduced by an asshole. Mm. The mini asshole the There's last a, time. A lot of assholes uh, in the business. I do the the former producer. I do, you know who I'm talking about. I can't say I, his I name. I believe so, yeah. I know this guy that I was like friends with who I hooked up with and had a romance with. He introduced me to a producer that was sort of on the project and fell out, dipped out because of the other guy. Right. And then when I was like, I just want somebody that really takes this, like really just likes the work. And David Mock Vox Mullen and I met through the comedy shrine when he was the booker. Right. And he does comedy and improv too. And he saw the pilot and instantly was like, I want a part of it, regardless yeah. of what it is. That's and great. Like, yeah. yeah. Like that's what it should and be. And I, you know, and I, I mean, I, I talked to him, you know, a couple weeks ago on the podcast. I haven't met him yet, but he's, uh, he's great. He's, uh, He's funny, you know. He's an entertainer as well, and he's got that business uh, production savvy side of him. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's a good fit, and I, I'm looking yeah. forward to meeting him at some point. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, he's a good guy, and it's hard though to find that. Like you're saying, it is hard. But but the next step is to have the series shot, the season one shot. Season one, yeah. But we got to get investors, so we have an investor. Get investors. So if you want to invest in uh, Divorce Diaries, uh, hit up Michelle Trainer. Yeah, what, what is the website by the way? DivorceDiariesShow.com, and they could also go to Divorce Diaries show at gmail.com email me because we have an investor yeah. screening november 26 in chicago 
Right. And uh, Michelle's Instagram handle is right there on the YouTube uh, slide. So you can go there, follow her, DM her, send uh, some you know inquiries about. Uh, They're going to say send some nudes. Please don't send nudes. Don't send nudes. Unless you are. Unless you are funding the show. Then you can send a nude, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that should Doug. be part of the package. Don't Douglas. Don't tell my daughter. Twenty twenty thousand dollars, they can send a nude, right? Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Okay, sixty thousand dollars, you can send a nude. You will not get a nude, but you can send one. You can send one. <laughs> that we will take nudes for sixty k. Maybe if it's a million dollars, maybe you'll get a nude. I don't know. Oh well, yeah, I think I could send a nude for a million. I think you could. Yeah, I'm not. I'm fine with it actually. <laughs> I'm sure you've said nudes for free. So, <laughs> excuse me to men that I've loved, Doug. Loved. <laughs> <All right. laughs> assholes live forever, right? Um, all right. Speaking so, of assholes, Doug said, "Who would pay forty dollars to do a meet and greet with you?" Okay, what well, people oh, yeah. did. Oh bitch. yeah. So this is part of the show. We have a meet and greet. <laughs> VIP tickets were sold. Uh, you know, yeah, they all sold out. But there's a meet. Michelle tells me there's a meet and greet. <laughs> <laughs> that you have to do. The show's at seven thirty. We gotta be there. Eight oh, it shows at eight o'clock. We gotta be there at at seven fifteen to do a meet and greet. Because then the, the house opens at seven thirty. Yeah, and I was like, I have to be part of this meet and greet. She's like, yes, and I was like, I, well, yeah, you don't have they to. They don't want to meet me. I mean, here's the thing about the meet and greet beforehand. It's just like you know, like what if I go in and I like suck, and then they're like, oh, I don't know. Well, I guess Same it's better for to, me. I guess it's better to meet them before if if it like doesn't go well. Because well, then a, you can run away at the end. Well, one of them is an investor in the. <laughs> pilot he invested a couple hundred in the pilot oh, right. so but i was joking i was like so the, so the people that did not get vip tickets they do not get to meet us correct they didn't pay they get to meet us after the show we'll see then they're getting the same deal as the vip but they don't get the merch bag uh, all right. and i'm gonna you know have a little more so the meet and greet after the show is gonna be quick because there's people that are do the go vips get to like touch you get to like uh no like that's why you're gonna be there to be honest oh. with you i would think for a vip they could shake your hand of course, but I want to tell the non VIP like, is like, no, 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 no fist bump. Titty, no titty, titty pick. <laughs> so you're already giving out free titty picks in the merch bag. Is that part of it? No. <laughs> no. Go to Divorce Diaries merch at Cafe Press. Oh, oh, okay. That's where you can, that's where you can get your. You can uh, get your Divorce Diaries merch. This is mug. special merch that I brought with me oh, from right. Jersey. They get this Mastello. Is, this is limited edition. Limited stuff. edition. Got it. Got it. All right. I'm so shaving yeah. my legs for them. During the show. Oh. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> plucking if, nipple hair. What if that was just? Oh god! What if that was just part of the addition, like that you add every now and then? Now I will do a live shaving <laughs> of my legs during the show. I mean, that's pretty hot. I mean, people would definitely come pay for that. I think, but I know is it gross fine. when you have like when you touch a woman's hair? Like, look how like white my legs are. I gotta put tanner on. Is it gross if you touch a woman's hair? Like, and leg if you feel hair? hair, yeah. Um. I think, I think like yeah, like stubbly is like more. I, I would almost rather there be like hair, hair yeah. than stubble. Stubble, because stubble's itchy. Stubble's itchy. Yeah, I don't like it either. Yeah. I like, I like if you're gonna go all natural, then just do it. I guess. I don't no, know. I'm I'm gonna shave because there's some uh, there's a cute guy coming. Tonight. Here's the difference I think between like men and women. Like so, like men have hairy <laughs> legs, right? So women are supposed to shave their legs, you know, quote unquote, whatever. So. Yeah, the, the the contrasting difference. So, like, if you're like with some, if you're with a man or a woman, like you feel like their legs up against your legs. There's a there's a contrasting difference yeah. between men having the hairy legs, women having no hair on their legs. I'm feeling it now. Right. So, like, so when there is a stubble, there's an obvious different sensation to the male. Right. Um, whereas if it was just if it was just hair, like if 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 the woman let her hair go, <clears throat> then it would just be two hairy legs rubbing rubbing up against each other, and they're and you probably wouldn't be able to tell. But then you might be like, wait, what is going on? What here? is happening? Yeah. I mean, I like I like shaving everything, like my arms, my legs. I like getting a wax. It's See, a just, lot of a lot of girls don't like waxing. That's uh, yeah. I love waxing. Some girls it's either easier. love it or they're like, no, that's too painful. It's it's so much easier than shaving, and it's like less time you have to spend mm. on it. But I wouldn't do my legs. I can shave. But you can't the rest. do that yourself. You can't. Cook. You people do. I really? don't. I have a girl, but I haven't seen her in a while because it's been a while since somebody deserves a wax. What if you had a man doing that? You would never have a man do that. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. I think the gender. It's just like I only get a wax if I'm going to be intimate with somebody mm. for a period of time. Right. Then it's worth it. Because if it's not, it's like, oh, forget. I'll just shave right. it. It's another routine. I'm tired of shaving my face. Like, yeah. That's a pain in the butt, right? 
Yeah, that's why I think I, I'm, I'm going to be growing my uh, mustache this month for Movember. Movember. I'm going to do that for no, the month of November. What is the point of that? It's for the well, pro- you can raise. I'm going to actually set it up on Facebook. I'm going to raise or, or see if anyone will donate money to men's uh, cancer testicle. Okay, I, think I that, like I that. I think that's the um, that's the thing behind it. Yeah. Should I do that with my nipple hair for breast cancer awareness? I don't think so. <laughs> nipple hair. Oh, I don't want. I don't want to talk about that. I'm Italian, all right? It comes all over the place sometimes. Oh, my God. I don't really get a mustache, thankfully. Yeah. All right. Let's change the subject. Uh, <laughs> all right. I identify well, as this, it. This, this is I'm a bass hole. Have you had any? Uh, I know you've been on the show before. Mm. I honestly don't remember your last. I didn't I didn't, I didn't. didn't look. I didn't listen to the old episode to uh, archive what we talked about last time. But, oh, um, yeah. Are there, have there been any... Uh, you know, new asshole stories uh, yeah. since the last time you've been on? or like, I mean, I have to be share? the asshole, right? You have to be the asshole. I mean, yeah, you should yeah. start with that. But you can also be like, well, this person was an asshole. I well, know. I mean, the producer guy, I was, I totally make fun of him on stage. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if, uh, how I'm an asshole. He's an asshole. But I'll see. Well, um, okay. I have a, yeah, I do have an asshole story. So right. I was out uh, doing Divorce Diaries in um, <clears throat> South Jersey. And I ordered my food after the show. And I used to be a server, so I, I totally always tip my servers well. I get it, you know. Right. Um, and they were closing, and I needed to order. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Usually um, some places give the comics, like, a free meal, and I wasn't sure what the deal was. So I was like, what do you guys do? you guys have steak? They're like, yeah, we have steak. And I ordered the steak, not seeing the menu or the price, right? And I ordered filet. Filet and mignon? Filet mignon. Yeah. And I, I didn't. I expected it to be a lot, but I didn't expect it to be what it came to. Right. And then the my former one of my former students had come to see my show. He's now a grown adult, and it was I, he comes from a very rough background, and I wanted to treat him. So he's like, order whatever you want. So he ordered a fillet as well. Oh shit! What kind of restaurant is this? It was a restaurant in a like a Hilton. Okay. Oh, nice. Or in like, the comedy club was in the Hilton, okay. I think. So like middle of the line steakhouse kind of thing. Yeah, but the hotel was charging a lot for this. So it ended up being 55 a steak. So the meal was a total of $200, and I never saw the price. So when she brought me, I was like, ah, fuck, man. Why wasn't the price on it? She didn't even bring, they didn't bring me a menu. You just they just said, I wanted filet? Uh, so you're like, well, we have many steaks. We have filet. We have strip. I said, I can bring me the filet. I, I thought maybe at least 30, but this was 50. So then I bit the bullet, and I said, well, it's my own fault for not asking for the price pay it with my card mm. i leave the tip 20 percent on the card because i don't have cash on me most places that i've now know have like tip out their servers at the end of the night even with credit cards some places still make put the tip in the paycheck if it's a credit card tip which is sucky but a lot of places don't from what i my knowledge was and so, and from when I used to work and when they used to tip us out at the end right. of the night, no matter what. So the waitress comes back a short while later. She goes, can you give us cash for the tip? Otherwise he has to wait two weeks to get it. And I was like, I don't have cash on me. She's like, oh. And she stood there as if I should figure a way to give them cash. That's just odd. That was odd, right? So my student goes throws down money and i didn't want him to pay especially after i just heard my former student after i just heard some of his family struggling his lights were torn down the whole thing he puts down his money and she goes oh thank you and i said no i took his money i gave it back i crossed off the tip Mm -hmm. i had 20 dollars, and the bill was 200 so i was going to leave for 40 dollars. right i only had 20 dollars cash on me I crossed out the tip. I gave her $20 cash, and that was it. I said, there you go, and I walked away. And she goes, oh, like annoyed. because." And I, I knew I was a little bit of an asshole because I could have given $20 cash and give 20 on the card and say this is all I have and not get snuffy about it mm-hmm. because I've been in her position. Right. But I would never go back to the customer and say that. Like, no, no, no. She could have got... It sounds like, first of all, it sounds like they didn't give you menus. Like it, this, I, I mean, this sounds like a, a, a decent steakhouse. I'm guessing. It's, but it's a restaurant in a hotel, so still. it has to be. Well, like I, would, a high, I would, th- I would, th- I, would th- I would, I would think restaurants and hotels should be even a little bit more, more. because like guests are staying there, right. they're relying on the business. You know, it, it, it branches off into the hotel, whatever. Um, but yeah, they didn't give you menus, so you don't even know like what they have. 
Um, you know, a normal server would be like, would you like to start with an appetizer? Would you like a glass of wine? No, you know, they, like, yeah. It was kind of like, what do you want? Well, I had to fuck, I had to seek them out too because they were closing their kitchen in like right. 30 minutes. And yeah, the, the, just, and I just worked just, too. Well, the, well, just like the, the, like, you have cash. Like, that, that, first of all, no one barely carries cash anymore. Well, and, and, yeah. and, and then, you know, and then the other thing, unless they go like, we're cash only, then you like, don't she go could have said before, that at the beginning. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I was an asshole to her, right. and I, I left half the tip. I was like, "There you go." Right. Because you didn't want him to pay. No, you didn't want him to pay, treat. and I thought it was so ballsy of her right. to come up to me. And she, I don't even know who she was referencing. I'm like, "You served me in another person," and they, it's not like they did a. It wasn't. You know, I was not a uh, high maintenance customer. No, I asked for two no. glasses of wine and the and, two and steaks. Two steaks. Yeah. And so I was pissed, and then I also yeah. felt really bad though because I was a server and right. I didn't want to cheat like. But it's almost like I would have either been like, do you have an ATM in the hotel or, whatever, you know, whatever. You could have done yeah, that. But, but, but it was also time. inconveniencing me. So I want to be like, fuck you, bitch. Right, right, now right. you're not getting nothing. Right. I'd almost rather like Venmo the fucking waitress or whatever. I don't know. Like, like, yeah, can that I, could can have I been Venmo another option the $40? Too. Like, I don't have cash. He's not paying. Can I Venmo you the $40? You know, right. I don't know, whatever. But like, I, I've been to play. What they do now is I've noticed like I've used like, like, um, you know, a debit card, like I have a thing, a debit card where they like update. <clears> so like if you go out and then like you leave like a $10 tip or whatever, like the next day it'll be like updated total to, you know, $50 instead of 40 okay. or whatever, you know, whatever your tip was like the next day, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's added or whatever, you know, but those servers don't sometimes get it to like two weeks later. I gotta tell you like, yeah, like, I mean, Which I, that's the restaurant. I fault. bartend and like, yeah, everything, most of the tips are credit cards. So it's like, we get that in our, in our paycheck. Oh, so you don't. Okay. I mean, we get cash tips every now and then, but like most of them are credit card tips and you, so, get it, you just get it in your paycheck. It says like gratuity, you know? Added. So that does suck. It does suck because then, you know, you have to, you know, obviously you should be reporting the cash tips anyway, but like, you know, you yeah. report some of them, but, um, uh -huh. You know, but it's, uh, yeah, it's like most people just have cards now. And, you know, and it's like, that's what it <clears> is, you know. Well, the thing with bartending and serving is that you get the money instantly. And I, I always appreciate that. I was, especially when I went back to waitressing and bartending after my divorce, it was easy money to mm. get that right away. Yeah. So I felt bad. I felt like an asshole because I understood. But at the same time, I was like, I not making him pay. And now you're making me feel bad because I don't have the cash on me. Like, that would have been like a manager should came up and say, hey, we only accept cash tip. Right. That's it. Right. Not this waitress coming up. Um, like she or, was the or the other thing is like, you know, sometimes like places just a lot of places add gratuity now. Like like and, and, yeah, and we yeah. are like like we've like been we're allowed to do that. Like if we want like if you want to add 18 percent onto any yeah. check, any check, I mean, usually it's parties <clears throat> of five or more or whatever. But like. I, I, I sometimes just add it automatically and like, you know, because like there's times where people are just like, they like don't I've, tip. Ser I've served like, you know, foreigners and I'm like, I know they're not going to tip like, you yeah. know, and it's like 18% and if they don't want, you know, if they wanted to add two two 2% more like cool, if not, you know, and then, you know, and sometimes people don't even realize it. They, they double tip or whatever. I mean, I was always brought to be up to be a good tipper because my dad was a barber. So he worked for tips. So I did feel like an asshole about it, but I was fucking livid and you know, part of me wishes I could have handled it a little differently and just said, um, oh, I wish you would have told me at the beginning, I only have this. I'm so sorry. And gave her back the check. Right. And as opposed to like throwing her back the check and crossing off the fucking $40. No, right. um, which I, I have to be honest, I was anxious about because I was like, man, I'm on a fucking budget. And then I just blew it right there. Um, so it was a little like it was a little bit of anger at myself, too. I've done that before, though. Like It's the worst when you don't ask to see a menu or whatever. Yeah. Like I remember like when I was in Iceland, like. We went to this bar and it was like, you know, I wanted like, uh, like a, like a, a, a glass of whiskey or a shot of whiskey or whatever, you know, and like, I, you know, I just was like, oh, I just, you know, give me whatever, give me, give me what's good, you know, and like, then he, you know, and I was like, probably, fifty dollars shot, yeah, well, it was like sixty dollars for like the shot or whatever, and it was like, and Iceland's already expensive, so it was like, I was like fuck i should have i should have asked you know but that was like my own fault it was crowded i was oh, yeah. like i was like trying you know i was on vacation i was like just trying you know but it's like at the same time you're like fuck that wasn't worth it you know it's like <laughs> oh my god sixty yeah. dollars and i don't even know what it was like I, I like he didn't even show me the bottle you know what i mean like if i was like oh this is uh johnny walker or something you know it's like it's like all right that's a, you know? that's a good way to get like that's a good sales sneaky let me fuck with the customer $60 charge for a dr Oh my god. Well, yeah, it's like when people order drinks at my bar, I'm always like, um, you know, do you, pref uh, do you pre <laughs> prefer a certain type of liquor or whatever, you know? And then sometimes they're like, 
no, you know, just the well. And I'm like, okay, great. But then if they're like, what, you know, what's good? You know, like I'll did you just give me like whatever's good? You know, like then sometimes I'll just I'll give them like the middle of the line. Yeah, know, thing that's like an extra get that kettle $15, one up there. You know, but like but then there's people that come in and get like 1942, like you know, tequila, and that's fifty dollars a shot. Oh. You know? You're in a rich, ritzy place. I worked in a college bar, so it was yeah, like it Maker's a, Mark. Different, different, uh, Belvedere. different, yeah, exactly. Different, uh, clientele, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I mean, I'll, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think like the waitress is more of an asshole in that story. See, I always fuck up with the asshole but, stories, but I mean, you definitely had like an asshole like vibe, probably because you were pissed. So, like, she probably thought you were the asshole. So, you well, know. I, I mean, there, I, so in conjunction with that, I, I, I yeah I mean I feel like she, they definitely thought I was the asshole because I gave them ten percent tip. Right, like she could have went back in the kitchen and been like, oh, they only tipped me twenty dollars well, or whatever. There's another one where where my daughter came home from school and said that this girl we had over our house all of a sudden within a week was now being rude to her and ignoring her after the kid asked to come over our house mm. and she tells me. Um, let's just say her name is Kiki, right? Kiki ignored me, has been ignoring me. Okay, every day after we just had this girl over my house, I fucking blew up water balloons for her, got wet all over the fucking place, yeah, right? And then this now girl is in a grade up above my daughter is now ignoring her. And she said one day she comes home from school and says, uh, Kiki just came over to me in lunch and like pretend to wave at me and did some weird mimicking thing and then ran away. So she was doing something that was like taunting my daughter on, in like an uh, indiscreet way. Right, right. So she's like, and I don't know what she meant by that. So I see the girl across the street and I eye her and I stare her down and I was like, well, let's ask her. She's crossing the street right now. Shit. You just go right for I the kid. I go right for the kid and I see her fucking stepdad across the street. I have no fucking problem bringing it to everybody's attention. Why are you fucking doing something weird and shady at my kid? Well, hey, Kiki, what is it that you meant by this at lunch today? And my daughter asked the question. And then the girl looked fucking scared <laughs> because I was staring her down. I'm like, what did you mean by that? Because we want to make sure we're all being kind friends. And her dad's crossing the street and was like, hey. I was like, hi. What did the dad say? Nothing. Nobody no. said anything to me again. The kid left her, my kid alone. Well, that's good. I mean, you got to stand up for your kids. I mean, I was definitely an asshole. I almost lost it. My daughter, I'm like, did I do anything else that I forgot about? Because I saw, oh, like, man. I saw fucking red. I mean, wait until they become teens. It's going to get, like, even more catty, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to start, like, <laughs> taking my hoops off on the playground. Hoops? Showing up, like, what the fuck's your problem? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's a time and place for that, probably. <laughs> Detention. <laughs> I don't know. Detention. <laughs> I don't think they have to. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Parent detention. Do they have that? I don't know. I probably need it. They should have that probably because there's always like that parent that goes like crazy at like the sports game or something like that. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard of those stories, you know. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like if your kid gets a slight, slightly offended or you feel like there's a situation where they're being not included, you, you know, every parent wants to lose their shit. Right. You know, and and address it because it's hard for even adults to address it within the community of school and their li family life. And, you know, I lose it a little bit. I'm an asshole mm. with that. Well, that's all right. I mean, you know, you're protective. So yeah, it's important. It's important to be a good mom, you know. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, like your journey here is a quick one to L.A. You got here uh. yesterday and then uh, you immediately uh, dropped everything in the apartment and you came in and made a mess. <laughs> I have like literally you dropped every, all the remotes. I dropped all the remotes. One I've used all your couch. toilet paper because I have my period. I know that's gross. Oh my god, yeah, that, people don't want to hear about that. Well, I'm just saying, like every time I come here, there's every like, time you do come here, then, like, you're on your period. I'm on my period, which is weird. It, it, I feel like it's God's way of saying don't fuck anybody, but like that stopped me before. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, uh, so what else? What else is <laughs> so? What else? All right. So, divorce diaries is is the main focus of like my life yeah, besides Grace. That's all, that does I mean, yeah, you your daughter and, and acting divorce gigs diaries and acting gigs. Yeah. Doing some stand up gigs out in New York next weekend yeah. too. You're auditioning for stuff. Yeah, I auditioned so. for a couple, a bunch of stuff. I I've been doing a lot of like UGC commercials, which is or like that? user generated commercials, and like the company will say, "Hey, we cast you in this film from your house," which is great oh. for a single mom actor because you don't have to leave the so house. So we do just film on your iPhone? Yep. Really? Smart news and Maley's Cosmetics. You can find me all over the place with them. 
Have you seen it on TV? Uh, on in the internet. A lot of people have actually shared the Maylie's Cosmetics one with mm. me, and they, they see it. The Smart News one I haven't seen yet, but I've, I've done two for them. And they pay you like immediately. It's great. Right. Um, it's not like, you know, like commercial, like national commercial pay, no, no. but it's good. Like yeah. for what you're doing, um, there is also I wrote a TV pilot for uh, another series with a bunch of women that are out in the Midwest. That is uh, there. That's another project that we're working on. How do you like writing with the uh, the writers group uh, with <clears throat> Divorce Diaries? I like it's it. Very, I like it's it. very different, right? It's different. I, I think we chose the, uh, you know, having them write about my life was a little weird at first because I, I felt like I had to take a step back and listen to their thoughts and also uh, take a lens of fictional versus reality. And we all worked very collaboratively together. There was one writer on who was a friend of mine in Jersey, but he ended up not being on, which I think worked well because the, the team in itself really listens and, and takes and gives and gives and takes. Right. And so I did co-write each episode with each writer. Are you amazed at like the ideas that they've come up with and like things that you probably wouldn't have thought of doing or that? Yes. Kind of thing? Yeah. There's some, some new characters that we've introduced that are kind of cool. And, um, and some bits that I would not have noticed that they tweaked and helped. And I, I I'm really proud of where it's going. And, and where these six episodes have landed so far. Because I know we'll do some more rewrites once it's in production. But, right. um, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm excited to, uh, you know, whenever whenever it's funded to uh, to start production and shoot. You I'm know? very because, excited. Um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be like, uh, you know, just having a, a, a giant redo of uh, the pilot and then the whole season. and uh, Yeah. Doing it at a higher level almost. So. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for the next step and phase for it and just yeah. manifesting that investor to come through. And it's not a matter of if, it's just when, you right. know, that right. kind of stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> Michelle Trena and her show Divorce Diaries um, hey. is, is performing all over the country, <laughs> all over the states, pretty much. Um, we got to get out of the country, too. We're in San it. Diego. We're, uh, you know, she's going to be in uh, Chicago at the end of November. Uh, she is regularly at the Broadway Comedy Club, right? Yeah, I mean, I do I do Broadway a little bit less regularly yeah. now because I've been really focusing on it as, as a national traveling show. Right, so right. the next New York City show isn't up yet, but we'll be doing it in New York on Long Island at Governor's okay. Comedy But Club you're usually summer. in New York City at least, you know, once, once, a, a, once, once a month. Once every six months, once yeah. A, once, once every six months, okay. And then yeah. New Jersey. Uh, comedy uh, Dojo. North Jersey and the Comedy Dojo, which yeah. is, uh, where is that at? That's in, uh, that is in Morris Plains. Morris I Plains. love that place. Yeah. yeah, good place. That's interesting because the Comedy Dojo started here up yeah. Yeah, street Sam Hollywood. owns that one too with Mike Mike Romanelli. Sam and uh, and the East that one. guy Trevor uh, Kevila. He was he was a oh part, yeah he was yeah a yeah with Sam. But like that, we don't even have a dojo of comedy here anymore because oh. uh, they uh, you know closed down here during pandemic. And now there's uh, I guess that's the only I don't know if that's the only one. I don't know. It started here and now we don't even have it here anymore. So well, it'll have to come out to Jersey. Maybe maybe you'll do an appearance on it in maybe, January. Maybe maybe it's interesting that they started in Jersey. Yeah. Uh, do they have roots there? So Sam one of the owners or? is owns a restaurant, owns Tiff's restaurant. Oh, okay. He's a head chef, and then I guess his friend is also Sam Tripoli. I think that's the connection. But I'm good for I'm friends now with Mike, and Mike loves Mike is a very supportive um, booker of divorce diaries and mm. what my mission is with it. So right. it works well. well. That's good. That's good. All right. So <laughs> club. So look for look for uh, divorce diaries. Oh but yeah, New Year's Eve too. Oh, where's New Year's Eve? At? New Year's Eve is going to be a special divorce series in Wheaton, Illinois, West Side Improv. So you do Wheaton, Illinois. Yeah, it's right. Chicago. It's the, it's the Chicago land area. So if you're in Chicago, what is the club? The we it's it's called the West Side Improv. Oh, okay. So um, that's going to be our special New Year's Eve uh, show too. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming on. I didn't realize you're doing New Year's Eve show. All I right. know we haven't. We have to. We've been catching up here and there, but I know we've been busy. Yeah, it's. Um, well, that's great. That's great. So you got so you're gonna you're gonna be in uh, uh, Illinois twice in the, yeah. in the next month month or two, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, maybe that'll be your new little home base. I guess. Maybe I'll find a nice Chicagoan guy, and I will not probably date him because he'll be allergic to me somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It'll be <laughs> that's how I even set up my fairy tales to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Write it up. Write it up. Um, all right. Well, make sure you follow Divorce Diary Show uh, on Instagram and go to the website and just follow Michelle. And, uh, you know, 
She's a little crazy sometimes, but we love her. See, look at look at this energy she has. I don't. Yeah. See, this is this is too much for me right now. I'm I'm like ready to take a nap. Divorced AF. <laughs> Divorced AF. You can you can buy her merch at where? At Cafe Press Divorce Diary Shop. Boo. All right. So get something there for the holidays are coming up. And yeah. what better way to uh, to uh, give uh, gifts to your loved ones than saying I'm going to divorce you? Here's a Divorce Diaries mug. This is my coffee. You can get a mug that says my coffee, and you can be married. Don't matter. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it. Christmas season is the biggest season for separation and divorce, so make sure you take advantage of that and go to DivorceDiaries.com for DivorceDiariesShow.com for all your holiday divorce gifts. Don't forget, this is a hot item for the holiday. There's a Black Friday sale, possibly. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. Maybe look, look at me advertising. I have, I love that. And we're going to actually also, um, we have... Uh, Act now. People that are getting married, you should get them their divorce <laughs> gifts early. Yeah. So get, yeah. you know, get the get the, get the the wedding gift out of the way, but then also pick up something for when the when the divorce well, happens. You know? I've had Just have it, put it in Put it in your closet, you know? Like that put it... Gi- but like, that gift that you're going to need at some point that you don't know exactly when. Yeah, you know? put it... But you have it. You have it. So when it happens, you're ready. There's a there's been bachelor parties and engagements at my show mm-hmm. before, which is so interesting. Bachelor parties, yeah, that's weird. I had a bachelor party. And engagements. Yeah, there was a batch a group of bachelors in Ohio. So they, like it's like almost like go and they're like I don't know let's 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 double think this or whatever. Like, let's. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to feel them out. I'm trying to just you know hey. Yeah, like why would you why would you no I mean no offense to the, I mean obviously you want people thanks, to go. Thanks, Doug. Here we but go. No, but like why would why would like someone be like an engagement party or a bachelor bachelorette like let's go to a divorce show um i don't know i mean here's what i like don't to look you think at that's it. odd a little bit it is a little odd but i think sometimes people get confused because they like well i'm getting married because when we were in vegas doug was being very generous and helping me fan out flyers for the show and the strip and some people were like well i'm getting married i'm like oh it's actually just a story about my life right you know right. so i feel like but in the sense of like i love the name so much i'm not shifting it fuck that Whatever. Right, people right, can come. Right. and i do have a lot of married friends that are divorced that like the show because they got remarried and right. they like of course it's a part of life it's a it's part, a part of, life. of yeah, yeah so but but it is it is interesting um like you know <laughs> someone that's in charge of the the activities or the wedding uh, yeah. party or the engagement or bachelor or whatever someone in that group is like uh we're going to this show at this time and then we're doing this and that you know so it's like someone decides like we're going to a divorce yeah. sh- diaries comedy show and it's I like, think it's funny. And it is funny, but it's like it's like wondering like the, even from the input of the other like girls or gr- yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's like, why are you crazy? You know, why would you do that? celebrate my life. I yeah, yeah, because you know, there's like a couple girls in the group being like, I don't think this is a good idea. Like, why would you do? Well, you know, <laughs> it was a man. It wasn't so. It wasn't a wet female. I know it was the men, the men that came, but they they seemed to like it. Yeah, but. Yeah. Well, that's cool though. Good. It's it's a little bit of it's something for everyone. There know? is something for everybody. That is one of the quotes. Jen Stay from uh, ABC News in Punta Gorda said that she goes. There's something for everybody in here. Oh, so Punta Gorda, you, yeah. Punta Gorda. I've been there, Punta Gorda. We've had some good shows there together. Some we have some good times. Some good times. I don't know if I'll be back. <laughs> Well, soon, we're sold out tonight in LA. It's going to be a good show. I'm yeah, excited yeah. to work with you on stage again. Exactly. It'll be a, a reunion of sorts, and it'll be very different for me. Uh, so it'll be an experience. I'm yeah, I'm excited. To, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Anything can happen. All right. All right. We got to go. Um, all right. So, Michelle Trainer, thank you for being here in the studio. Thank uh, you for as having always, me. Of course. You're always welcome. Uh, guys, make <laughs> sure you, uh, you go to uh, the. Um, you know, the Instagram page, again, like I said, uh, at Basshole Podcast or at Basshole Show. Uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes and uh, Spotify and wherever you get your podcast fix. Leave us a review, you know. Uh, give us a little rating. Uh, tell your friends about us. I know you guys are listening in different countries. You might want to tell your friends, uh, and they'll tell their friends. That way we can grow the podcast. Uh, grow all right, it, guys. Baby. And remember, we're going to be at the Hollywood Improv on uh, on uh, Sunday, November 11th at 9 p.m. That is a live show. You can grab tickets at BassholeShow.com. Uh, and remember, guys, don't be a basshole. But if you are, laugh about it. We'll see you next time. Ciao. 
You've been listening to I'm a Basshole with Doug Bass. Follow us on Instagram at Basshole Show. Think you deserve to be on the show? Email us at contact at BassholeShow.com and visit our website at www.BassholeShow.com and get the latest information. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast fix and don't miss the full videos on YouTube. Remember, don't be a basshole, but if you are, laugh about it. We'll see you next time.